Kave is everyone's favorite relatable broke dude in Genshin Impact with how his character arc explores the trade-off between artistic ambition and financial success. With how deep in debt he is though, it's safe to say that he prioritizes the former much more than the latter, and that demonstrates how firm his stance is, willing to risk the potential to live a comfortable life in favor of upholding his true values. However, despite his very very rough living circumstances, he still manages to keep afloat somehow and you might even be surprised to learn that his debt management might actually be better than you'd expect it to be. So with that, allow me to give Kave a huge pat on the back in this video and start a discussion on indebtedness with you guys. If you find this kind of content interesting, do consider subscribing to my channel to support my little video essays and get the opportunity to catch my future releases much more easily. Before I get into talking about why Kave is relatively decent at managing his debt, it's important to outline the criteria I'll use for evaluating him. Since Hoyoverse hasn't canonically released a credit score or rating for Kave, and I doubt that Sumeru actually has that system, we just have to work with the general understanding of his lore to assess his credit worthiness or his ability to pay back his loans in a timely manner. Usually, the concept of credit worthiness is utilized by lenders or creditors before they actually lend their money to see if lending to that person will become risky. However, in this case, we're just going to approximate Kave's credit worthiness for the sake of analyzing his character lore and not because we're gonna lend him money. The concept of credit worthiness is essentially a measure of Kave's trustworthiness with handling money that's borrowed, and from that, I created three things to look after when it comes to assessing how well Kave manages his debts. Heavy disclaimer though, I'm not a financial analyst, I'm only a college student, so I'm just gonna be using an informal kind of framing. Nonetheless, in this video, I'm going to assess him based on timeliness or how punctual he is with his debt repayments with a focus on his Palace of Alcazar Zerai debt, his indebtedness to other people in general, and lastly, his code of honor. This third point is actually the most important because it'll spell out the difference between someone who pays their debt late because they really don't have money and someone who pays their debt late because they're shrewd and are trying to get away with leaving their creditors hanging. Basically, I'm going to try to show how Kave succeeds in managing his debt based on these three criteria and what that says about him as a whole. But before we get into the actual analysis, yes, I'm sorry, there's really lots of preamble needed, but if you want to skip to the next section, you may do so. But I would argue that he's paying off his loans to the gremlin through the process of amortization. This just means that he pays equal payments over time with each payment covering both interest and principal. This inference of mine was based on Kave's statement in his hangout that if he just continues working hard, he can eventually repay all his debt, indicating that the payment process is likely incremental and gradual. This is corroborated by the fact that the gremlin says she's anticipating that time of the month, when she can collect more from Kave, heavily hinting at the fact that Kave pays her monthly, and this will be the assumption that I'll make for the rest of the video, but it doesn't necessarily have to be completely true. So with that in mind, the measure of Kalvis timeliness is going to be whether he does pay during his due date every month or not. Unfortunately, much of this discussion is going to be reliant on mentions of the gremlin herself. Anyway, in the Interdarshan Championship event, she does hint at Kalve asking for some extensions on his monthly payments and the gremlin is able to give that to him sometimes when she's not pissed at least. This gives us the impression that Kalve can't pay in a timely manner, however, in his hangout, she also does seem excited to collect money from Kalve during that time of the month, and the way I interpret this is that more often than not, he is able to come up with something to pay or else the gremlin's sense of excitement would have been replaced by frustration if Kalve was unable to pay her every single month. 
Seeing your debtors come to visit you only to not come up with any money to give you would easily induce a sour feeling in you and that feeling would be far worse if you're someone who cares a whole lot about money, like a certain someone. This is a somewhat generous interpretation, however, and it does minimize the fact that Kave asks for extensions. But it is also worth noting that the gremlin doesn't always yammer on and on about how he's never able to pay her, and the absence of those kinds of voice lines likely indicates that Kave does indeed pay her as regularly as possible. This is because creditworthiness can also translate itself into your reputation sometimes. The more you default on your debt obligations, the more your creditors will view you as an untrustworthy individual, and it can result in some bad blood brewing between you. Hence, I do think the absence of the gremlin's strong animosity towards Kave hints that his monthly payments are more or less regular, and his extensions would only be minor, perhaps just a couple of weeks depending on when his clients will pay him. So yes, that's basically why I think Calver is more or less good on this front and the timeliness of his debt repayments might be improved if he collects fees from his clients more early and consistently or if he does other side projects which can help extend his funds. Speaking of extending Calver's funds, there is one thing or person rather that I think probably helps with this matter and obviously that's high thumb. It's really a no-brainer. It's likely that Calve can borrow money from him to settle fast approaching payment deadlines and he can pay high thumb at a much later date. So he essentially acts like a buffer. I don't think there's much evidence to suggest that he does this for the Alcazarzerai debt, but he probably does this for other things like his tabs at cafes or bars. Or it's also likely that Haitham settles these bills himself and doesn't count on Kalve paying him back anymore. On one hand, this seems like Kalve is too dependent on Haitham and is incurring more debt on top of his already outstanding debt. On the other hand, however, it's also noteworthy that Kalve is generally able to hide the fact that he's living with debt except for when he spills the tea on himself when he's drunk. If his debt did pile up too tremendously, he'd basically be borrowing money from nearly all his friends and he'll have a reputation for being in debt, because he owes them money. Sino and Tignari, who are close to him, don't seem to be aware of him being in debt, so it's unlikely that he borrows money from them. So it's safe to say that the piling up of his debt is contained and he's likely not racking up huge bills on top of what he already owes the gremlin. However, you might argue that he does have a lot of extra debt obligations, but it's just that they're all centered around Haitham and not spread out among his friends. That's kind of true to some degree, but the amount of debt obligations he has with Haitham or the amount of freebies he asks from him are likely well within a certain threshold. In general, Haitham seems to be rather patient towards Kalve, to some extent, and it can be argued that it's because he doesn't really view Calve as a burden. Although he does make a few jabs at Calve's financial situation, it's not enough to amount towards a consistent sentiment, and their arguments are more based on ideological differences rather than nagging about his debt. So what's the point of this? Well, you know how people say you shouldn't lend money to your friends because it strains the relationship when they can't pay on time? With that logic in mind, the fact that Haitham is not perpetually bitter about Calvis' consistent inability to pay him likely means that the amount of debt obligations Calve has with him is probably not that huge. It depends on Haitham's degree of tolerance to Calvis' reliance on him, but whatever that threshold is, Calve doesn't seem to have surpassed it yet. Yes, I know they did have a conversation on the Puspa Cafe message boards where Haitham called Kave spoiled and refused to pay his tab for that period of time. But it was more of a way to prove a point to Kave to remind him of the importance of commercial exchange within the arts, rather than a result of his roommate necessarily crossing that threshold of acceptability when it comes to his debt obligations in the context of their relationship. <laughs> 
It's worth noting that the gremlin was willing enough to foot this bill, so maybe it wasn't that large to begin with because she's unlikely to part with a whole lot of money if she had an option not to. Also, it's worth noting that Kave does pay him a certain amount of rent already, so this can be what Haitham uses to fund his expenditures on Kave. Anyway, this rent shows that Kave is not Haitham's leech, at least not completely. More on that later. Okay, okay, I know my case for Kave being decent at managing his debt with the other two points doesn't seem that strong, but I can say that when it comes to his word of honor, we can expect Kave to stay true to his word of paying off his debts eventually and anyone who knows his true character would trust him easily. He promises to pay the gremlin back and he also expressed in his sketchbook notes that he wants to do something for Haitham in exchange for providing him with shelter. He also says in his voice lines that he's learning to live within his means now, demonstrating that he's willing to change his life to fulfill his financial obligations to others instead of simply ignoring them or being thick-faced enough to maintain a costly lifestyle in the moment without thinking of his future. I know it seems like a low bar but some people still do that even while in debt and they find ways to escape from it or make fake excuses for being unable to pay on time, which Kave doesn't seem to do. Kave is also very selfless in general and that would likely translate to him being willing to part with his money if it means that he's doing what's right and part of that is repaying his debts of course. Additionally, his statement about being able to pay off his debt if he works hard and consistently enough, shows that he's committed to his goal and doesn't think of it as solely the problem of his future self. Ultimately, it's his intention to honor his debts that make the people around him view him in a mostly positive light even though he is financially indebted to some of them. Even if he can't pay on time or has to borrow money from his roommate once in a while, I think they know that it's not because he's trying to scam them or get away with milking them dry, but simply because he does lack income at that moment and will make it up to them in the future. It's actually quite impressive that he's still choosing to honor his debts to the gremlin even though she's the most vile creature in Sumeru and yes, Apep is counted already. Kave could easily justify not paying her on time because she's a very very sketchy business person but he doesn't do that and instead understands that repayment is his responsibility. Even when it comes to the rent Haitham charges him, he does kinda complain about it but in a sense, he complained more about the wood carvings rather than the fact that Haitham is reminding him about his obligations. Of course, I think that's part of the subtext in this statement, but I think he's not exactly vilifying Haitham for collecting rent considering he's been wanting to give back to him somehow for allowing him to stay at his home. And of course, how could we forget that Kave generally has huge feelings of guilt. And while I'm not saying it's good for him to sustain this level of guilt, it is also something that takes on a corrective purpose by ensuring that he always does what's right. This likely influences his regular debt repayment because he will probably feel very guilty if he misses out on many due dates already. This will keep him from being rude to his creditors and manipulating them into feeling bad for collecting money from him. Well, that's like the worst case scenario, but it's just to illustrate the point. All of this just to say that part of what makes Kave good at debt management more than his financial literacy boils down to his sense of morality because he wants to do what's right and keep his word of honor. He will pay as regularly as possible and only give excuses that are factual and valid. Plus, he'd likely make up for his late payments anyway. So at the end of the day, his code of honor won't be abstract anymore because it will also translate to his behavior. Even if he doesn't go about his debt management perfectly, it's alright because his creditors will see how hard he's trying and will give him credit for that. Sorry Sino must have written that sentence. I apologize. Anyway, I think it's safe to say that Kave prioritizes paying according to his obligations first, then allocates the rest to personal consumption. And that's also where he gets help from Haitham.
Speaking of which, I did mention how Haitham helps Kave a lot and how I think Kave must somehow be attempting to pay him back in some way, both financially and emotionally, so to speak, like by expressing gratitude through other means such as housekeeping. However, I would like to say that in some sense, accepting help from Haitham is also a good sign of debt management. And now you might be wondering, how is that a good thing? And also, doesn't that contradict what you've said previously? Well, I want to clarify that it's good that Kave is trying to be financially independent from Haitham by paying him back for some things, but it's good that Kave wasn't too prideful to the point of rejecting his offer to let him live in his house. It must have been very hard for Kave, considering they had a falling out and being in debt was quite embarrassing for him. Plus the fact that his being in debt essentially reduces the merit of his worldview, which opposes high thumbs. He could have chosen to reject the offer to save his last sliver of pride, but he decided against it and let me just emphasize how amazing that decision was. If Kave did end up buying his own house, he might have to take out a mortgage which, surprise surprise, also uses the amortization system meaning that he'll have to pay monthly or even annually, which could be very, very burdensome, considering he also has to pay the gremlin monthly, and both of these creditors are quite strict to some degree, and he could risk losing his house once more if he defaults on his mortgage to a huge extent. And that doesn't account for the utilities he has to pay for. If he did decide to rent an apartment, or at least a room in someone else's building, He'll have to pay rent except this time the business-minded owner might raise the rent rates almost entirely based on their whim and it would be hard to be up for a negotiation. Plus, he could face a threat of eviction if he doesn't pay on time, adding lots of stress to him on top of the monthly payments he has to make to the gremlin. And that's two monthly payments so he won't have anything for himself anymore after that and he might actually starve for long periods of time. Compare that with him living with Haitham, which is a situation where he does have to pay rent, but Haitham can accept extensions based on Kave's current income situation and his rent rates might even be subject to negotiation or even discounted from the usual prevalent market rate, but that's just a headcanon of mine. Best of all, however, Kave doesn't really face an eviction threat. Like, yes, it did seem like Haitham quote-unquote threatened him in the Archon quest, but I think what Haitham meant is that it's Kave's choice whether to leave or not. This may be a generous interpretation on my part, but Haitham hasn't threatened him in any substantial way since then and even accepted him to continue living in his house even after Kave donated Sachin's entire estate instead of using that to find his own place. These facts all show that relying on others is necessary to stay afloat and Kave is able to do just that without resorting to being the equivalent of a leech. I think he's able to find a balance between maintaining his dignity by not becoming completely dependent on Haitham while also being humble enough to accept the necessary assistance. This is a good kind of mentality that Kave can keep up, and his hangout also implies that this sense of companionship is also necessary for Kave to stay sane in spite of the constant difficulties he faces, not just by living with debt, but by living as someone whose principles clash with those of the rest of society. The long and short of it is that Kave made a really good decision by accepting Haitham's offer to come live with him, and it's a decision that'll benefit his financial and emotional state in the long run, even though it seems difficult for him to accept now. I think he just has to get over his shame over living with someone due to his indebtedness because I believe it's actually admirable and not something that taints his character. As we've learned from Calvis' case, we can't immediately scoff at people in real life for managing their funds imperfectly because it can be harder than we'd expect and sometimes not having debt can be an indicator of privilege in some circumstances. So I think we can use our love for COVID to help us empathize with people who are in debt in real life and understand that some of them may have a lot of merits despite their financial situation. And we should also refrain from making the assumption that all people who are in debt are automatically untrustworthy or unreliable. 
Some of them probably just so happen to have low paying jobs or might be their household's breadwinner, so it's important to remember that nuance when discussing financial indebtedness. But of course, that doesn't mean that we have to just be completely chill with debt, like there is a way of acknowledging that debt is harmful without unnecessarily belittling those who are affected by it. And we also can't dismiss them for not paying all their debt, like in one year or something. Actually, I do know that people have a tendency to be very understanding towards Calvis, financial debt, and sympathize with him well. He is kind of like the Genshin fandom's muse in some sense and for good reason, because he means so much to us in terms of what he stands for. Thus, luckily, we don't have to encounter lots of comments dismissing Calvis' financial situation, but I wanted to just emphasize how well he's doing and possibly start a productive conversation on debt with my viewers since it's a very real thing affecting real people and even countries as a whole. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for sticking with me through my passionate ramble about Calvis' debt. And if you appreciate him just like I do, that means we're on the same wavelength. So please consider subscribing to me if you want to catch more analyses like this one. Do let me know if you want more videos pertaining to Calvert or certain financial aspects of the game because I find these topics very interesting. I hope you learned a lot today and I'll see you in my next video.